Hello everyone, my name is Joseph Corson, channel is called Ethernet Wink. This, this is episode 24 of the Quant Finance Advent of Code that I'm recording right now, so Merry Christmas Eve. <clears throat> that just hit me as I was recording this, because if you guys last the, watched the last two videos, I should look very familiar um, pre-recording them just so that way I can enjoy my Christmas week and not have to worry about the uploads or um, not have to worry about like just doing a bunch of stuff. And then, holy crap, I didn't record a video yet today. Um, so yeah, but these last two videos, right, we had neural networks and we gradient boosted the neural network. And we had decision trees and we gradient boosted the decision tree. These last two videos are going to be about neither of those two things. They're going to be, this one, I want to hammer home, like do more with less. So it's just going to be um, linear regression with a gradient descent. And the prediction engine is just dot product, which is awesome. Um, that is this accurate. But um, yeah, and then we're going to be doing a Gaussian process. So that one should be a little complicated. But uh, this video, I just wanted to hammer home, like do more with less and that simple or things can still be very, very accurate. So yeah, that's what we're going to head into. Um, this is my X account. Give this up. Oh, I didn't mean to click on that because I already have. Um, I already had it up. <laughs> I already had it up. Um, this is my X account. I'd appreciate if you guys give this a follow. You guys can see um, updates as soon as they come out and just get sneak peeks to stuff. And this is my algorithm with Luxalco. If you guys like to actively, if you guys like to actively trade, check this out in the description. It could be for you. But you guys are here to write some awesome code. So. What we're going to do is we're going to implement linear regression with gradient descent, plot predictions, two results. So if you guys have followed along, this is to um, this is our Asian, yeah, this is our cache, and this is our get stock data. We're going to go over create sequences, and this is all that we need to implement linear regression with gradient descent. And so for our main, we're going to go through this. So that way, if you guys, this is if this is your first video, you'll see what we're doing with the cache. You'll see how we're you'll see how we're getting our data. And then we're going to go through and actually get our predictions. Um, so yeah, our cache is kind of like if we were to implement this in a web app that like should never turn off, then if we do, if we make a connection to get something heavy stored in the cache in memory, so that way when the next person wants it, we don't have to make that API connection again. So same concept. Um, start and end date, we're just doing this on queues, getting our stock data from this. It'll check, um, this is also asynchronous, but it'll check how am I trying to say? It'll check to it'll do it as, in the fastest way it can before it makes an API connection because that would be the slowest. And um, so yeah, that's how we get our stock data, which is a dictionary. So for every ticker and data frame in our stock data, we could then do some stuff. So copy our data frame so panda stays happy. Get our log returns. Drop the NA. Get a NumPy array of our log returns. Sequence our data by sequence. I just mean split it up into an X and a Y. That's all this is doing. Give our data sequence length, and then just split it all up pretty much, just based on the list comprehension. List comprehension in Python, amazing. I don't think I would use this language if it wasn't for list comprehension packages. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Because even this crap, um, uh, right here, get stock data. Get stock data returns a coroutine. Python can be hyper-threaded. It can't be well, hyper-threaded. Python can be multi-threaded. But there's, I just learned about this. There's, it's called a GIL, a global, global index locker. I think global interpreter locker. I'm not sure what it is. But it makes it so that bytecode can only be executed on one, one thread at a time, I believe. I believe I'm explaining that right. So even though we have these code routines, everything still pretty much ends up getting executed synchronously like one after another which is weird um just use go dude but but i understand why you wouldn't use go when you could do this at the top of your python files regardless just wanted to throw that in there in case you guys didn't know that and in case i explained that wrong because there's that's totally a possibility if i explain that wrong and you know how to actually say what i just tried to say with coroutines drop that in the comments please regardless though we're going through, we're splitting up all of our data into trading and testing data. Uh, make sure it's all the right shape. Scale it just so that way it looks a little bit prettier. And then, yeah, get our linear regression model, fit it, and predict with it. So let's go through and look at this now because this is the bulk of the video pretty much. We're going to have a learning rate. We set it to default to be 0.1, 0 0.01, .01, have our epochs, how many times are we going to train it. 
And so then we have our weights and our biases. So to fit it, we're going to get our uh, samples and features. That's our X shape. The weights is going to be zeros, but it's going to be of size, of shape, or shape-like, right? Of shape and features. That way we don't have any conflicts with that. Initializing our bias to be zilch. So for every, for a thousand epochs, pretty much in this case, for a thousand times, predict by doing the dot product with x and our and our weights and then add the bias to it that is our prediction that is our y prediction that is so simple that's so simple like it's so simple it feels like it shouldn't work but it's awesome that it does work just dot product with x and our weights add our bias that's our predicted value compute our gradients is 1 over n samples times the dot product of x transpose and our error. This is our error right here. Y, um, y predicted minus y is our error. Dot product that with our x, transpo x transposed. I do not have the mental, I don't have it in the pocket right now to explain what transpose is, but it's basically, um, no, I do have it in the pocket. I don't know why. I don't know why I doubted myself. Let's open up paint. All right, so if we have, I'm just going to do two by two. If we have two, three, one, four, and this is A, um, a transpose would be two, three, one, four, right? Just flip it pretty much. I don't know why I didn't think I had that in me. Um, <laughs> that's all that is. In case you didn't know how to transpose a matrix, there you go. Um, and dot product, why not? Let's. Let's do a little linear algebra and calc three class. So that's tran transpose and dot product is let's say we have two vectors, two, three, and then one, four. Um, so this we'll call it B, this we'll call it A. So A, I'm just gonna, uh, ah, I don't wanna, so A, and then well, I'm just gonna spell it out so that way you know and I don't mean multiplication, dot B, and this returns a number, it doesn't return another vector. It'll be um, 2 times 1 plus 3 times 4. So 2 plus, I just wrote out the actual answer, 2 plus 12, and then that is 14. So a dot b is 14. That's what we're doing here. And then computing the gradients, so whatever whatever number we get, from dotting our transposed matrix to our error, multiply that by one over samples, and that's our gradient. So DW is that, and then DB is one over our samples times the sum of the Y predicted minus Y. Because remember, all these things are lists, pretty much it's all, it's all data, it's not just single values. So then we're gonna update our weights and biases from that. This is actual multiplication. So weights, because remember, we wanna minimize loss, so that's why we're subtracting. So minus equals the learning rate times this gradient, and bias is learning rate, um, bias, ah, it's a derivative of weights, or um, is that what I want to say? Yeah, we're just subtracting it by the derivative, the partial der derivative for the weights and the partial derivative for the biases, pretty much, is what we're doing here. That's gradients, right? Um, screw it, we're going to explain gradients, too. This is turning into a Calc 3 and linear algebra ca class, but I do not care. So let's say we have f of x and y. So then the gradient of x and y is, ooh, I hope I remember this now. Actually, I don't even want to put that up there so I don't have to write smaller. Is, yeah, I remember it. Is, um, I'm just gonna write it down here now so that way if you've seen this for the first time, your eyes don't play tricks on you. It'll be partial x, partial f, partial y, partial f. Oh, that's a crappy f. Partial f. Weird thing from the series, I got good at writing in paint with just a mouse like that. So what does that actually mean? Um, in practice, because just like that, what's like, 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 let's say you don't know what a partial derivative is at all. 
So let's say our f of x, y is a function. So I'm going to say f of, um, let me make it real simple, just 2 x minus 4 y. Very, very simple. So now, like don't get tripped up just because there's two variables in there. It's okay. So remember, it's partial x, this, the, function, the partial derivative in respect to x. So we're only going to take the derivative of the x variables. So this is just 2. And so then the next part is the partial derivative, derivative of just the y variable. So this is just negative 4. Oh, wait, I don't need that y. Just negative, just negative 4. That's all gradients are. That's all gradients are. And this represents um, direction, pretty much. Yeah, that's it. So just <laughs> there's a little boot camp for Calc 3 and linear algebra. If you guys have to take that at any point in your life or you never took it before, it's not that bad, right? Whenever people say dot product and, um, how am I trying to say, dot product and gradient and stuff like that, you, yeah, you know what that is. It's not that crazy. Um, it can be crazy, but it's not that bad. <laughs> um, have you guys seen that girl, that only math girl? I have to. I don't know if her videos are good, like actually informative, but um, I don't know. Maybe I start that. That was entirely a joke. Um, so yeah, weights <laughs> is, this is pretty much like taking the derivative in respect to weights. This is like taking the derivative in respect to the bias. So weights minus equals the learning rate times derivative of weights, same thing, but for bias. And then prediction is just that dot product plus weight prediction, I mean, plus bias prediction. So yeah, that is how all that works. So we can just say Python and then run that. And it's also, come on, don't make me look back. It's also very quick in, regard, in uh, regards to the last ones. So yeah, remember that we're only predicting up and down because every prediction is a classification, but not, not every classification is a prediction. Sit on that. Think about it. Um, so yeah, that's all that this is doing. It, this is predicting the next log return. So that's like predicting that's going to be our log return. Our actual was not positive. But um, yeah, that's what we're trying to do here is just predict the next returns if it's going to be positive or negative. So... Yeah, that's the video. That is the video. You just implemented a linear regression gradient descent. Um, gradient descent prediction model. That's why they call it gradient descent too, because we're subtracting. Right? So ideally, these gradients should get smaller and smaller and smaller as we get closer to actual values, because that would mean that our errors are smaller. Right? When this number is huge, when, as this number grows, so will this. So as this ever gets smaller, so should this. That's why it's a gradient descent. Yeah, hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Hope that you guys learned some damn linear algebra. Some damn Calc 3. I'm so happy I'm done with Calc 3. I'm so happy. Um, I had to do differential equations next semester, though. <sighs> Um, yeah, I'm still on break though. I don't have to think about that. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. This was a fun one for me to make. <laughs> um, it's Christmas Eve when you guys are watching this. So I hope that you guys have a Christ good Christmas Eve. Hope that you guys spend it um, in a way that makes you happy. I hope that hope that you guys are having a good holiday, regardless of your situation. Regardless of anything like that, you got two feet in a heartbeat, brother. So feel good. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your Christmas Eve. Learn some damn Calc 3. I'll see you in the next one.